I wanted to show a completed toolbox project that I did to maybe spark some creativity. So basically, um, I've got the rigid system. It's been great, functional, cost effective, and pretty much all of the toolboxes that I've purchased have been all rigid boxes. I can stack them all on each other, they do what they need to do, and they're built well. You know, I wish they had a couple more options, but overall it's a good, straightforward, durable, water resistant box. Um, one problem I've had though is that I've had all my hand tools and one of these guys, just a tool bucket organizer. And while they do keep things somewhat organized where you can look down and go, oh, yeah, I see my tape measure, you know, whatever, I can, I can pretty much see everything down inside of here. By the time you fill this thing up, you're, you wind up going, wait, which, which side, where's that? Oh yeah. Oh, let me dig down in here. And it's just, you know, you can't see things all that well, but the other problem with it is that you've got to carry it. And this thing is heavy right now with just a few tools in it. Those are just spare tools. Those are tools that I pretty much never use. They're excess for say someone needs an extra hammer or tape measure. Um, but it's, it's hefty even with just that small amount of tools. And so when I have all my tools in it, when every pocket is filled, that thing is heavy. And the whole point of the rolling toolbox kind of modular system is so I don't have to carry it. So, in walks the crate. Let me show you what I did to modify it to be usable. So the problem with the crate is you throw everything into it and it's all unorganized. As you can see from this, I've got it pretty well organized at this point. So let's go through some things I did. Um, I've got a lot of those extra orange bins from purchasing all these rigid boxes. And I've kept them around because I knew at one point I would use them for something. Well, this is that something. So I've got these things just screwed in from behind here with just some little 8x32 screws um, and nuts. and. Uh, yeah, so those little bins are great for holding all my knives or all of my writing utensils, sharpies and pencils. So and that's pretty easy. You can just screw them into the side of the box and they're made to fit because this is all designed off the same system. So three of these boxes will fit perfectly right here if you wanted to do that. You could screw in three of these right into the edge of here and have three on this side floating up in the air and three on that side. Um, that's not what I wanted, but you could do that because they're just made to fit in here. They're also fit for cross. Now it's not a perfect fit in here, but it's pretty close. There's a little bit of a gap between them. Um, but uh, that's another thing you can do. Uh, what I did was I took a piece of aluminum plate, cut it eight inches um, tall by 21, 21 inches wide or long. So it's, it's eight inches. 8 inches tall and 21 inches long. Then I cut that down so they would have notches. As you see over here, and excuse the little bit of mess, I had to trim that a little. Um, but you see all these notches? I thought, well, why can't I just plug the uh, aluminum into these notches and I can pop it out someday if I wanted to. I don't have to fasten it permanently to the box. So that's what I did, was I cut little notches into it because the actual width from the inside to the other side is 20 and a quarter. So I just cut those little notches a little bit longer because I cut it originally to 21 inches uh, so that they'd stick out. And I, of course I had to modify it probably in the end, uh, cutting it to 20, 20 and an eighth and then giving yourself maybe a quarter of an inch of a notch on both sides would be about right. But these are uh, from the bottom of the box. It's about one and a quarter and then this is an inch, this slot here is an inch. So one and a quarter to two and a quarter, and then this is four and a half to five and a half inches. So those slots are all about one inch thick. Um, and yeah, I just copied that and stuck it across there. So now these little bins can fit in here and I can pull the whole bin out. Now the other thing you notice is that there are technically two bins here. Since I had so many, I was like, hmm, the problem with the bins is that they're so shallow. Great for some stuff, not so great for longer tools. So what I did was I took two boxes 
and I just cut the bottom off of a box. You can see right here, that's just the bottom off of one of those boxes. So I just cut it right here. Once you do that, you just slide in the other one, friction fit it, and uh, you can do that ad infinitum. You see that? You technically could cut the bottom off of all those boxes, and you would have one really long bin. Of course, it'd look kind of funky, but you could do that. Um, so that's what these are. These are all two bins that have had the bottom cut off of the top box, and uh, it just makes a nice taller box. So I can see everything. I've got all of my pliers and wrenches in here, my metal cutters and my uh, uh, whatever those things are called. Um, then you got the chalk line and the torpedo level and then random miscellaneous in there. Uh, yeah, so all my long stuff fits down in there. My hammers, my hammer tacker, little mallets, whatever I need to. My long 12 inch speed square fits down in here. Um, I could potentially take this long speed square and stick it up like that if I wanted to. It's a nice little slot that that creates, but it does stick out a little more. So, anyways, it fits down in there pretty well. Um, but then this little guy, uh, I made a separate video on how to make him. I started off with just a little uh, pine chunk of wood, and I attached it. You can see if I remove these, I attached it to the lip that's underneath here with some some of these little 8x32 um, bolts uh, with screws and lock nuts. And uh, started with that pine block, but I quickly realized with all these holes in it, all it's going to take is me whacking it with a hammer when I'm tossing something in, and that's just going to break off. So I took a little bit of that aluminum and uh, just made a top plate for it. And all that's holding it there are the three bolts that I've got that are attaching it to the rigid box underneath. And then this is just a little bit of pipe strapping that I took. And uh, as you can see, it makes a nice little place for my tape measures to go. Now the nice thing is about this is that um, I, can, I can move stuff around. Uh, it wouldn't be too difficult if at some point I didn't want these here anymore or I only wanted one or whatever. Well, you just pop them off. This little lip isn't really sticking in there very much. Uh, those boxes I could just remove, undo the bolts. Now one thing to note is with all of these modifications, obviously you're voiding the warranty the Rigid has. Anytime you touch anybody's toolbox anywhere and drill holes in it, you're going to void the warranty. Um, nothing I've done is going to cause any kind of structural damage, but it will put more, I guess, stress on the box. Uh, you know, I've got all this weight just riding on that lip, and I've got three bolts in it. Should be fine. Worst case scenario is at some point it breaks, say something lands on there and just breaks that plastic. Um, and I could probably just uh, do some sort of support piece on the this side, bolt it to the plastic and, you know, fix it again. But yeah, you aren't going to get that warranty with Rigid if you do this to your box. But this thing is pretty cool. I mean, now I can pick it all up. I can put it up on top of my all of my boxes and carry it. And when this thing tilts sideways, I don't have to worry about anything falling out. Everything's going to stay exactly where it is. Even bumping and rattling is not going to fall out. So, yeah. All in all, this is just a good, good box for carrying all of my hand tools and miscellaneous stuff. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this has sparked a little creativity. And, uh, oh, the tools that I used... Um, I used a circular saw to cut the boxes. Um, I used my drill to drill through with some titanium coated bits through the aluminum and wood. Um, used a tape measure obviously and some markers to mark everything. Used a jigsaw with a metal blade to cut the uh, cut the aluminum plate. Um, used the uh, sander here to smooth the rough edges. And then I used uh, just some standard bolts and, and lock nuts and split washers and stuff to hold everything in place. So I already had all this laying around, so it didn't cost me anything, just my time to put this all together. If you were to buy the materials, I don't know how much it would cost, but I would suggest use whatever you've got. If you've got plywood, use some plywood. You don't have to use aluminum. Um, plywood will hold better than just a piece of pine because of the way the grains alternate. Um, but yeah. 
that's that's it did not use any special tools just a jigsaw circular saw and drill really um yep hope you enjoyed